Dat is de pondokken. Dat is de grote spitskoppen. Dat is sugarloaf. En dat is de rockpools. Dit is de spitskoppen. Ik ben Nick van Namibia. En je kijkt 5410 Afrika. Welcome to the Spitzkopper. This is reception. Very easy check-in procedure. You stop, uh, you pay per night. Currently it's 115 million dollars. They do accept credit cards, so you don't have to worry about that. And yeah, you choose. They give you a map of all the different campsites. You choose one. There's no allocation. You can choose any one. And what I usually like to do first is get in the car, drive around, remind myself how beautiful this place is, and find a camp. So let's do that. got the camp up as you can see it's extremely basic you got a place to bry with Frank to tank you got my tent up table chair bucket uh, just in case you run into trouble with the fire a bin the basic toilet way over there it's what we call wild camping <laughs> wild camping remember there's no water no electricity I like this spot because uh, it's called Acacia because you actually have a tree most of them don't have trees there is facilities you can take a shower but you have to drive all the way to the gate the main gate they've got showers there they've got a bar restaurant some basins and stuff but yeah you have to drive all the way there this is not the only accommodation available at Spitzkopf. You can also stay at the Spitzkopf mountain or tented camp which has got those permanent tented structures and then you can stay at the Spitzkopf lodge which is the more upmarket option. Obviously it costs a bit more. So yeah welcome to my little camp for the next couple of days and I think next I'm gonna go uh, check out the rock pools. I'm off on a bit of a hike. I am going to over there. <laughs> uh, the rock pools. I'm on my way to the rock pools. I'm leaving the camp behind. I'm leaving Frank behind. Frank's refusing to start. Well, she's starting, but having starter issues. So stay tuned to the end of the video to see if <laughs> my car starts on Tuesday morning and I'm able to go home. Yeah, it's a problem. Backpack, water, towel, SPF 50. So this is the rock pools. <laughs> I'm take an icy cold swim now. So fill your heart, your heart, the things you might find. So your eyes can see what you left behind. Yes, the water's green. The bottom is slimy and iffy and <laughs> Pretty disgusting and it smells and it's full of weird stuff but it's 
ice cold. It does the job. And the added advantage is this, this ledge, which provides shade throughout the day, like a proper refuge from the sun. So you can literally just come and lounge here. That's where some spots way up there. Just come and lounge here in the shade all day. Just, especially the hottest hours, say from 11 to 3. And then after that, get going again. So yeah, that was the rock pools. I'm done here, I had my swim, and I'm moving on, moving on back to the camp, and probably go for sunset next. Sunset Rock. I've walked all the way, hiked all the way around the western side. Behind me is the western entrance, which is currently closed. I'm going to hike up there now, set up time lapse, and hopefully show you one of the reasons you should come to Spitzkopper. <laughs> I've burned <laughs> quite 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 bad uh, sunburn well, Frank not or refusing or giving problems you know wanting to start hoping that uh, there's one more start the plan is or what's happening is Frank's starter is messed up so I don't want to keep on starting it because I'm worried it's gonna fail completely so I'm not touching it, just leaving it. And I'm hoping that I can get one more start out of Frank. And that one start will take me to Vintuk. Well, two. I'm gonna have to drive to the next town, fill up with petrol, hopefully get another start, and then be able to drive all the way to Vintuk. So that's the plan. I'm pretty sure you can't even see my face because it's too dark. But yeah, it's been a long day. See y'all tomorrow. Good morning everyone, it is 6.45, quarter to 7, on day 2 at the Spitzkopper and I'm on my way, I'm going to take a hike to the main gate for a shower and some fresh water by now you should have known that Frank is man down, he's abandoned me so <laughs> it's up to my two feet to get around we will be getting an amazing sunrise as we hike down. I'm not sure how far it is. It's probably about three or four Ks. I've never actually measured it because I've never had to walk it. <laughs> it's a first for me. After that, I'll be coming back and I'll be going to the Bushman, which luckily, fortunately, this camp that I've got here is pretty central. So there's travel tip. We're going to the Bushman rock paintings. Hopefully they'll allow me to, to uh, shoot some film there. And I'll be able to shoot, show you that. Because so seeing that uh, I'm now unable to drive around, let's talk about the drive. The drive here is pretty easy. I mean, it's one of the easiest places to get to in Namibia. Accessibility. From Vintuk is about 250, 260 kilometers, of which the last 35, 38 about, is gravel. Well-maintained, 
in a very good condition. So no, you don't need a 4x4 to get here. You can get here with any vehicle, any vehicle basically. I've seen so many small sedan cars driving around. I've done it with my own little Polo when I still had it. So there's no issue. Driving here, self-drive. This is one of the easiest self-drive destinations in America. So fill your heart, your heart, the things you might find. So your eyes can see what you left behind. They will follow you, yeah, just by word of your mouth. And believe in what they It's so easy to complain in these situations. And yesterday when I started getting that car trouble, it would be so easy just to pack up. So that the engine running. It's a conscious decision to switch it off <laughs> and hope that it will switch on again. It's so easy to, to give up, you know, just throw in the towel, say screw this, I'm going home. But then you push through and this is what happens. Seven o'clock in the morning, hiking in the Spitzkopper. There's no one around, it's just the birds and yourself. A beautiful sunrise. I mean, what more can you ask for? And these are exactly the situations that I will be finding myself in on multiple occasions when traveling through Africa. But you need to show that little bit of resilience and push through. Because in Africa, it's always worth it. Always worth it. restaurant more basins that you can use plus a water point if you need to fill your tanks reception showers pretty cool outdoor showers no roof on top oh yeah something to remember if you're going to use these showers they are solar powered solar powered meaning there's no hot water in the mornings. If you want to chow hot, you need to come in the evening. Let's just check one of them. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. You just walk in, in, in. Oh. That's it. Tip of the day. Tip of the day. There's a power outlet here if you need to charge things, it works. And the basin, well, an iffy, iffy, ugly basin is on the back here. Oh, you can use it. Cool. Let me take a shower. I'm not going to show you that. <laughs> Just finished my shower, feeling <laughs> massively refreshed. It's going to go down there, uh, fill up my water bottle, and then I'm going to make a quick hike back to the camp before the sun gets me. I'm back at my camp courtesy of a free lift, a free ride. I guess it was the manager, can't be the owner. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Saved me a lot of time. Mubins are friendly like that. You're gonna have to get used to it when you <laughs> visit here. Mubins are, well, the country is suspiciously friendly. <laughs> yes, there are bad people around, but in the majority, all friendly. Plan now is just have breakfast, chill for an hour, then make my way to the Bushman's Paradise. I hooked up with a guy at reception now. He told me it's 50 Namibian dollars, which is what, three US dollars, roughly? It's just, just ridiculous. And then, yeah, I'm so, I'm so, I'm chuffed. I mean, I've got a free lift, the guy's so friendly, we had a chat, told me about Frank's problems, told me, no, just give me a call tomorrow morning if it doesn't work out, I'll come sort you out. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. See, I told you this morning when I was hiking, show a bit of resilience in Africa, and Africa will always reward you. Just write that down. <laughs> See you later.
Cool, so just arrived at the small Bushman Paradise rock paintings. And my guide Dennis is going to show me around. You're not allowed to do this without a guide. And about an hour and 20 minutes, pay them directly, remember to tip. Yeah, let's go and do this. Unfortunately, because the sun is shining directly on these rocks, you can't see it too clearly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the other side, I think it's called Golden Snake, and then come back in. Cool, only one night left. It's left the campsite behind and we're heading over there, somewhere over there, to campsite number five. Dennis told me this morning about a sweet spot where you find uh, this epic rock arch. I found campsite number five. It's easy, that's the rock pools, so you'll just come down that road. What's going to be more difficult is finding those arches. Up. I just want to see if there's any way of getting to it from the other side. It doesn't look like it. I think this this might be it. See, these are the arches. Um, campsite number five. This is as close as I could get because I'm not wearing proper shoes. I've, I've checked if I can go the other way around. Doesn't seem like it. Those of you that's a bit more experienced, comment below. Tell us how to get there. Still pretty awesome. And how's that? How's that for a view? They will follow you, yeah, just by word of your mouth. And believe in what they hear, just to say it out loud. So hold it. Good morning, everyone. It is the final morning. I'm just gonna have a quick cup of coffee, have some breakfast, pack up camp, and then we'll see if uh, Frank's gonna start. Hopefully that happens. You can revive your fate and make it seem like shining new. Just don't forget your way, the simple things that make Here we go. Let's see if she starts. Frankie, I've, I've honestly dreaded this moment. I've, uh, I've not slept well last night. I'm probably awake every 30 minutes. If this car doesn't start, it's gonna be a long, long, long day. Ay, ay, ay. Let's see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you've been waiting for, okay? There's power. Dead. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, for those of you, for those of you that thought that this is clickbait, this is reality, man. This is not Hollywood. <laughs> this is not a Thai massage where we always have happy endings. This is reality. 
yeah there's nothing more there's not much more i can do show you on this video i think i've showed you i showed you the spitz copper i think i did a pretty good job at it i really do hope you come around when you come to namibia i should <laughs> stupid frank come on man it's gonna be a long day yeah let's wrap it up i've shown you the spitz copper i've shown you how to get here told you how to get here watch out for my video driving to the Spitzkopper I have showed you the accommodation I've showed you some of the activities and this there's, there's not, not, not much more I can show you I just really hope you if, if you come to Namibia it's on your way it's easy it's accessible you don't need a 4x4 it's pretty cheap coming here it's 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 really is a budget option and that's about it if you have any more questions pop them in the comments you know that I always put uh, more information in uh, the description below. I want to thank Jacob and Taylor for letting me use their music. And uh, remember to subscribe. I'm Nick from Namibia. This is Frank the Dead Tank. <laughs> and you'll be watching 5410 Africa. Guess, guess where I'm going. I'm halfway through the hike. Well, not halfway. You can't see the campsite anymore. That's where we're heading to those hills over there. And I've realized something is wrong. <laughs>